Hello friends. I'm going to be working on four wine glasses today I'm using KS Resin Liquidy Split. I have four glasses so I have 40 milliliters of resin already mixed up in my cup and instead of coloring with mica powder or um, acrylic ink or resin dye I am going to use a little bit of acrylic paint and this is as close to an emerald green as I can find. Um, so I'm not going to use very much. I'm going to use a drop. Oops. So this is about what I'm going to use. And I'm just going to see. But you can use acrylic paint to color resin. Your, your ratio should be uh, no more than one part paint for 10 parts resin. Now, I didn't measure this. So that's why I'm just using just a little bit. That is a really pretty color green, but it's a little bit green. So I'm going to mix in a drop of this. I don't know if that'll work. Well, we're just going to have to go with the green. I feel like I need a little bit of blue. So I'm probably going to add Tiniest little bit. Let's see what we can get. Oh, yes. All right. I'm trying something different. Look what I got. That's my present. Yes. I have the best husband in the whole world. So, this is going to be probably a little bit too green, but I'm going to go with it. So I'm not going all the way to the top. I like my fluid edge. Plus there is, you know, there is some, some question about whether it's food safe or not, if it goes all the way to the rim. And of course, KS Resin Liquidy Split is 100% food safe when it's properly used um, and properly cured. So I do have a link in the description to the material safety data sheet if you have any questions about that. So I'm applying a thin layer. I don't like to put a thick layer on glasses because I'm just painting. I don't want this big, thick hunk of resin on these glasses. And you don't need a thick layer. You're just painting. You still want to be able to see through the glass. At least I do. That's how I design mine. But if you... If you set your glass down, I love my tumbler, my turner turner, but if you set your glass down on the counter hard enough to chip the resin, you have probably broken the glass. I have never had an issue with anyone coming back to me saying that the resin has chipped off, and I sell a lot of these at art and craft shows. This is 10 milliliters per glass of resin. And 10 milliliters costs me, what is it, 14 cents per 10 milliliters? I don't know, I'm gonna have, I'll do the math. I add that to the cost of the glass. And I just get these at, you can get these at Dollar Tree. You can get them at Hobby Lobby, I think. Um, Big Lots, Old Time Pottery, lots of different places where you can buy the glasses. So 
you just add the cost of your materials and that tells you um, how much it costs you to make your glass. And I always like to price them according to the market, but then I, you know, I want to price it right too. I don't want to underprice myself. So that's important. All right, don't need my glove anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and pop some heat on it. Low heat, high air. Now I have some gold alcohol ink that I've mixed one to one with isopropyl alcohol, 91% isopropyl alcohol. And I'm just gonna do a really simple design. Do you notice that I'm drawing on with the applicator instead of dropping the ink on in, in little droplets? This is really giving me a lot better control over where the ink goes. Now, make sure that you clean your applicator tip because it will clog up with resin and then you'll end up having boogers. Gold and green are so pretty together. out and squirt it out. So I do dilute this gold because gold just tends to be so strong and dominant. These metallics will do that and um, they just will, will take over everything. You can see how that really sort of helps to break up the, you know, the strongness of it and now I'm going to push it with my heat gun and really try to break this gold up it's low heat and high air and what I'm doing is I'm heating up the resin but it's also pushing the resin and forcing it to really blend and melt And sometimes it takes a little bit of effort. You've really got to get tough with this. This gold, it just wants to clump. And it doesn't want to cooperate sometimes. But once we get it moving, it will get really wispy and it'll sort of mix in with with the green and then it'll start giving us these really wispy waves and that's what I wanted. I feel like if I push down it helps a little bit more. Like that. like I have as much on this glass yeah I don't think I have as much on these two Another way, too, that you can get the resin to move a little bit is just pulse your turner off and on and encourage the resin to move. And then you just pulse it a few times. But the problem with this one doing that is the turner arms do 
change direction. I didn't have that on my last printer. So this one's taken a little bit of getting used to. But so far, I like it. Ah, I'm going to do this one too. I am really pleased with these. Look at that. It's just very, very simple. I just got to have a little bit of cleanup to do at the top. Even like this little drip there. I'm really happy with this. This is so elegant and simple. These will sell really, really well at my art show. These will sell really well. I think I want to do another set maybe with silver or. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to do another set with silver alcohol ink. These are really smooth. I don't have a single bubble or anything. Okay, I need to clean that right there. Yeah, these turned out really well. Thanks for sticking around and watching my video. I hope that you enjoyed it and maybe consider giving this a try. Thanks, friends. Bye.